All right, class. Well, welcome to um, language. I am very excited about today's lesson too. It is, um, it is very interesting, and I hope to make your school life a little bit easier after you've learned this lesson and figured out how to look up words in an easier way. So let's first of all let's review what is a, a, what a dictionary is good for. It can give you the meaning of a word, which is what we call the definition of a word. It can help you spell the word correctly. If your spelling is wrong, your the dictionary will tell you how to spell it correctly. Also, you can find out how to pronounce the word correctly. It'll have markings of the word, how to pronounce each vowel, each consonant. You can find out what part of speech that word can be used as. And then also, dictionaries can give you sentences. How do you how to use those words in sentences correctly? So those those are really useful, very great ways a dictionary um, can be used for. So when you don't know what the definition, the meaning of a word, what can you do? You're gonna grab your dictionary. But today, this is why this lesson is so important. There can be sometimes an easier way to find the meaning of a word. And this is what we call a glossary. A glossary is somewhat like a dictionary, but instead of being an entire book of its own, a glossary is found at the end of books. A glossary is a list of difficult or unfamiliar words from a particular book. The, the words and their meanings are found at the end of a book in a section that's called the glossary. So the glossary itself is not a book. The glossary is a section of a book that explains the words you, you would read in a book. So, hmm, take a look at your math book. This is probably the one you're very familiar with. Take a look at your math book. Do you guys remember how I told you it has all the answers at the end? Do you remember how I told you to look at this page right here? Well, guess what? There is a glossary. I'm going to come up a little closer so you can see this. Do you see the word glossary right there? Well, guess what? The math book has all the words. Look at that. Denominator. The bottom number in a fraction. It has the word and it gives, gives its meaning, its definition at the bottom. Look at that. What's a centimeter? It's a metric unit of length. Parallel lines, lines that never cross. So a glossary comes at the end of a book. Take a look. There's our math book and it has a glossary at the end and it lists all the difficult words that you might find in the math book. Now, hmm, would you find things like um, language terms that we've learned so far? Like, would you find the word adjective in a math book glossary? No, but you would find the word adjective in a language book glossary. So if you take a look at your language book, there is your glossary at the end. Let's see if we can find the word adjective in here. Do you think it'll be in here? Hmm. Well, look at that. Adjective is a word that describes a noun. There's your glossary. So glossary comes at the end of certain books. Um, we even have had some at the end of readers, the reading books that you you read throughout the year. So if you see any difficult words, you can turn to the glossary at the end of a book and it'll list difficult or unfamiliar words and their definitions. So that's how it's similar to a dictionary. A dictionary and a glossary are also similar in that they all come in alphabetical order. The entries come in alphabetical order. 
um, sometimes a glossary will have pronunciation marks on top of the words and um, sentences. Sometimes it'll have pictures of things that, that might be hard to imagine if, if it was just a definition. Um, and they, glossaries do sometimes have guide words at the top. So they're very, very, famil um, very similar to dictionaries, but they're different in that a uh, dictionary will have a whole bunch of all kinds of words, while a glossary, a math arithmetic glossary, will have only words from an arithmetic book. A language book glossary will have only words from the language book. Did you know that you also have a glossary at the end of your history book? Look at that. There's your glossary. You have um, John Adams, the vice president of the second president of the United States. Then you have Adam, um, John Quincy Adams. You have agriculture, the Alamo, Louisa May Alcott. Alcott, Louisa May. What is an ally? What is an almanac? Altitude, ambassador. Look at that, they all started with A words, then they go through and go to B words. Then you'll see some C, Confederate States of America, Constitution of the United States, um, Constitutional Convention, Continental Congress, and it gives you the definitions of all of these. That's your glossary of the um, history book. Now, are you going to find any definitions of um, fractions and denominators in here? No, because it's a glossary of a certain book. Okay, so on page 172, open that up. Read the purple box. A glossary is an alphabetical list of important or unfamiliar words from that book, a certain book. The glossary of words and their meanings is found at the end of the book. Some glossaries include examples, like sentences, and pictures. Look for a glossary at the back of a science book, a history book, or even some reading books. So, you're going to take your language book glossary, you're going to look at the back of your language book, you're going to find the word fact. Think A says, use a glossary at the back of your language 3 book to answer each question. Find the word fact and write the definition. So we're going to flip back to the glossary at the end of our language book and we're going to look for the F. I'm at P. Am I going to keep flipping or am I going to go back? Okay. There's K and and here is our fact. So you are going to look at this definition of the word fact. A fact is something that is true and can be proven. You're going to copy the definition of the word fact. Something that is true and can be proven. Notice also, before you go back, notice also that it has a reference. Where did we learn about fact and opinion? It was way back on page 110. So if you want more practice samples, more information on the word fact, you could turn and look for it on page 110. Does that make sense? So we're going to go back to page 172 and we're going to write down something that is true and can be proven. Next, you're going to look for um you're going to write a f you're going to write one fact as a complete sentence. One fact as a complete sentence. This is up to you. Think of a fact and write a complete sentence about it. All right, for number two, you're going to go back to the glossary and find the word proofreader's marks and draw these in the boxes. So find proofreader's box or proofreader's marks. And it has sample examples of you. How would you mark 
um, a sentence when you need to insert something? How would you capitalize something? How would you lowercase it? How would you delete it? And how would you mark a spelling mistake? You're going to draw those symbols in each box. What do we do when we have to insert something? Well, it tells me right there. What did I do with it? There. That to insert something, we draw a little birdie. Insert mark. So on page 172, in the first box, you're going to draw a little birdie. To capitalize, it says to draw three little lines. That's our symbol for capitalizing something. So you're going to draw three lines in that box. Okay? And then lowercase, delete, and spelling mark mistakes. So you're going to draw those symbols in those boxes. Okay, for number three, you're going to look up the word verb and write the three sample wor verbs from the glossary. Okay, and then it says write the pronouns that are used in the predicate part of the sentence. So you're going to go to the glossary and find the word pronouns. There's your pronoun, right there. And then it tells you pronouns in the subject part, I, we, she, he, they. Pronouns in the predicate part, me, us, her, him, them. Which one of these sets is used in the predicate part? These right here, predicate part of the sentence, me, us, her, him, them. Also, you and it can be used in both, so you can write those in. So you are going to copy in page 172, section 3, um, you're going to copy all the pronouns that can be used in the predicate part of the sentence from your glossary. Okay, and then think B is easy. You're just going to put them in alphabetical order.